Okay, I'm doing a beaver job for a local farmer here, and uh, I'm in a slough on his property. And what I'm looking at here is uh, some pretty good sign. You can see this is a slide, it's a fresh slide where they're coming in and out of the water. And if you look up to the left, you'll see some fresh cutting right there. So this is a pretty fresh sign there. Uh, the slide is right there, the cutting is right there. So I'm going to set this up with a snare. Um, there's really not enough water here to, uh, to drown it. This is pretty shallow water. Uh, and so I'm going to, uh, to use an earth anchor to uh, secure the snare. I'll drive it into the ground and uh, I'll have him, uh, hopefully have him there in the morning. We'll see. Okay, here's the finished set. What I've done is I've built a caster mound up on the top of the slide up there. I've put an old uh, plastic cup just for some eye appeal give it a little bit of white. It's a good use of trash, I guess. I've hung a snare, and that's a 1 by 19 564 inch snare uh, right in front of it on the slide. I've put two small guiding sticks, nothing fancy, just, just a couple of guide sticks there. You can see there's my uh, fiberglass fence post snare support that has uh, the number 9 wire that comes out, and the number 9 wire fits into the whammy, and that's what supports the snare. And you can see I've got my snare loaded. This set takes me about a minute to construct. It takes me longer to get the camera out and to film it than it does to make it. The snare is attached to a six foot extension cable which goes down into the water and terminates with an earth anchor and I use the fiberglass fence post to shove the earth anchor into the ground. So. The only things that I'm going to carry to make the set are things that I'm actually going to use in the set. The snare is pre-attached to the uh, extension cable. The extension cable has an earth anchor on it. My fiberglass snare support with the number 9 wire is also used as the driver to push the earth anchor into the mud. And then uh, I finally uh, follow up with the dab of beaver lure up on the uh, caster mound. And then I dribble some down the uh, slide and I slicked the slide up a little bit with my hands just to give it a freshly used look. We had a lot of rain last night and this morning so I'm hoping they'll get out to uh, freshen their sets and uh, hopefully I'll have them in the morning. Now this is a set that I use year after year after year. I come here and I catch beavers like clockwork. This is a perfect natural funnel. This is an old stump that's out here in the swamp and you can see it's hollowed out and there is a little uh, channel underneath. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a snare right in that channel. I'm going to tie it off to the side of the stump so I don't have to worry about an earth anchor or a driver or anything like that. I'm simply going to uh, clip the snare right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to smear the beaver lure on the ceiling of the channel. And what this is going to do is when the beaver smells the lure, he's going to swim through this natural channel looking for the source of the uh, lure, and he's going to get caught in the snare. The great thing about this set is the lure is protected from the weather. So even if the, the rain rains hard, it's not going to wash the lure away because the lure is going to be protected from the weather because it's on the uh, underside of that channel. Now I wanted to film this before I get in and muddy the water up. It's real shallow here. Uh, that water is probably 8 inches deep, 10 inches deep, and that doesn't seem to matter. I catch them here regardless. Uh, the other thing is uh, at this water level, even if the water level rises, it can rise 4, 5, 6 inches, and my set's still going to work. The lure is still going to be there, uh, and it'll still catch them. So this is a great, great location. Uh, let me make the set and I'll uh, give you a shot when I'm done. Okay, here's the finished set. Very quick, very easy. All I did was take my snare and you can see I've clipped it around the tree, the extension cable, using a spring clip. You can see the top of my uh, fiberglass fence post. This is about a two foot long fence post. You can see the number nine wire that comes up, sticks into the plastic tubing whammy. I've uh, formed my loop and it is right in the middle of the channel here and I've smeared lure all up underneath the bottom of that and out on that little projection there. So once again this takes about a, a minute, minute and a half to make the set 
it's protected from the weather. This thing will stay here as, uh, as long as I leave it open. And the first beaver that comes through there is caught. I've moved down to the main pond, and this is a little creek, a little ditch that gets uh, increasingly narrow up ahead. You can see it, it's really going to narrow up. And this is used as a connector between the pond and a main creek back there. So everything swims through, to, through this little ditch. This is a great funnel right up here, and I catch a lot of beavers every year. And uh, I can zoom in a little bit. You can see where we're going up there. So I'm going to put the camera down and uh, paddle on up there a bit. There are a few really choice spots that I, uh, I always do well in. I'm going to make a few more sets, and we'll see how it goes. Here's another snare set. And as you can see, this is kind of a, a little uh, folk, uh, choke down point on the, uh, on the ditch here. And what I've done is very simple. I've attached my snare to the tree. Just wrap the cable, the extension cable around it and clip it on with a um, uh, quick clip. I've stuck my fence post, fiberglass fence post, down in the water here. And the number nine wire is right there sticking into the uh, plastic tubing whammy. Most of it is uh, under the water so you can't see much of it. Then I've got my snare uh, loop right there. If you back up a little bit I've placed a, a stick across the top of it and I've smeared my lure on the bottom side of that stick directly above the loop. You can see there's a little bitty uh, piece of uh, that stick hanging down and the lure is right there at that fork and if we come back a little bit, you can see the creek comes down. There's a fallen log right here. And so this is basically the only way through. And uh, so if a beeve comes through here, I've got him. Or at least I hope I do. I've, uh, I've learned that there's a lot of things that can go wrong. But anyway, that's a good set. I think I'm going to make one more, and then I'm going to pull and uh, go to my next location. Okay, this so is the last set I'm going to stick in here, and as you can see, this is a very narrow trench that's leading from the back of this farmer's field down into the water and out into the main ditch here. It's very, very narrow, and this is a great set location. I catch beavers here every single year. And what I've done is I've stuck a stick with some uh, Dobbins backbreaker lure on it right there. I've also smeared some lure on the side of that stump. I've simply attached my snare using a spring clip right here. And you can see that's the setup that I use, my generic snare setup, where I have a spring clip and uh, an earth anchor already attached so that I can use the same snare whether I'm going to clip it off to a root like I'm doing in this case. See I'm clipping off to that tree root or I can use a driver and use the earth anchor to secure my snare. So in other words, I grab a snare, uncoil it, and go. You can see there's my fiberglass fence post that's stuck down in the water. Now if you look at the number nine wire, see how I've snugged it up around that root? Then it goes down into the water and comes up to support my snare. That's a rock solid support right there. That's in the ground good and deep. That's looped over that root. There's very little play in there, and the only thing that's going to move is that snare. Now, another thing that I want to show you is how important it is to have a loaded snare. Now, you can see, most of the time, if your snare isn't loaded, the animal has to actually pull the snare shut. That's not what I want. I want that snare to jump shut when it's touched. So you can look at this right here, and if I bend this wire, See how that snare jumps shut all by itself? As soon as I took the tension off of that thing, it just snapped shut. And that's and, I, and I'm not touching the, the snare at all. I'm touching the support wire over here. And you can see how that, that snare will close by itself. And that's what loading a snare does for you. It applies tension to the back of that lock by this loop here. And that way, when the animal Hits the, hits the snare, it's an assisted close, and the animal doesn't have to pull the whole thing closed. So anyway, that's a good set. Hopefully we'll have some luck. 
Well, the rain finally stopped, uh, and this morning dawned uh, bitter and cold. Uh, kind of a gray day, but here's something to take the uh, edge off. Got a nice beaver there in one of my snare sets. A nice big beaver. And although he's under the water, we have another one right here. A nice double. Here's two beavers within about 10 feet of each other. And I had one snare set up right about here. And then I had another snare set up over here. And the beaver has wrapped itself around over there. You can see I give them plenty of, plenty of cable. You can see there's my little flag. I had that channel there. I had the beaver lure on some of these branches above it. And when he swam through, he got caught. And he's over here, tangled up. And then I have this one right here. So I'm going to dispatch these. And then I've got a long haul out of here. And I have a feeling I'm not going to be so cold when I get done. So let me shut the camera off. This water's kind of deep here. So I'm going to get in and uh, get them out of here. Here's a good reason why you always, in my opinion, when you're snaring beaver, you want to give them a good amount of cable to work with. You don't want to short snare them. You can see, there's the beaver. It's got the snare on him. You can see that it wrapped around this tree and he buzzed that tree right off. He also took care of that one. All these little ones, he spent all night, he had all night to try and chew himself free. But you can see that cable runs all the way over and it's anchored a good uh, five or six feet away. The idea being with enough cable, when he gets caught, he's going to swim around and he's eventually going to wrap up over here somewhere. And this is where he's going to fight. He's not going to fight where he's anchored. In other words, he's not going to saw down the tree that he's anchored to. He's going to saw down the tree that he's wrapped around, which is a good five or six feet away. So you can see he kept busy all night. He did a lot of cutting here but he didn't get away. You can see just how destroyed that cable is. That's a 1 by 19 5 64 inch snare cable and uh, it's pretty much useless. They can really do a number on it. You can see the other one over there. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. But uh there we go, there's him, and you can see he did the same thing over there. And he was actually anchored over there by that orange flag is where I had that snare anchored. And so he's a good, I don't know, eight or ten feet wrapped around where he was working. But I had three snares out, caught two beavers. It's not a bad way to start the morning. Let me uh, get them cut with, uh, get the snares cut off and I'll salvage the snare locks and the swivels and whatever else I can and then I'll haul them out of here and then it'll be on to my next stop. Here's the caster mound slide set that I made yesterday and as you can see, or I hope you can see, I had a miss. The snare loop is uh, drawn down and off to the left. Hopefully that'll show up. So uh, something knocked the loop down. I didn't have something right. Oh well, that's the way it goes. At least with the snare, he's not going to be snare shy. Uh, doesn't spook him. So we'll uh, we'll try it again next time. And here's the finished product. This is the two beavers that I caught this morning. Um, after I've skinned them, boned them out, and what you're looking at is a tub that has uh, eight leg quarters uh, and two uh, back straps uh, that have been uh, cut up and uh, trimmed. You can see this is a lot of meat. This is very high quality meat. There are no steroids, no antibiotics, no pink slime. It's all grass fed, no hormones in it. Uh, it's as good as it can, uh, as you can get. And you can see this is a deep red uh, meat. Good looking stuff and this is excellent. 
Sometimes I will uh, bone out the meat off of the uh, leg quarters and put it through a grinder with uh, bacon ends. When I do that I use 20% uh, bacon to 80% beaver by weight. But here lately I've been on a stew kick and a soup kick so I'm going to leave these on, on the uh, quarters and uh, put them in the crock pot. But anyway, it's a lot of good meat and all it takes uh, is some effort to go out and catch it and some uh, work to put it on your plate. Any man that's willing to work can eat and can feed his family. Y'all take it easy. Thanks for watching.